Ever feel like you suck at this job? Motherhood, I mean. Have too much anxiety and not enough patience? Too much yelling, not enough play? There's no manual, no village, and no guarantees. The stakes are high. We want so badly to get it right. But this is survival mode. We're just trying to make it to bedtime. So if you're full of mom guilt, your temper scares you. You feel like you're screwing everything up and you're afraid to admit any of those things out loud. This podcast is for you. This is Failing Motherhood. I'm Danielle Batman, and each week we'll chat with a mom ready to be real, sharing her insecurities, her fears, her failures, and her wins. We do not have it all figured out. That's not the goal. The goal is to remind you, you are the mom your kids need. They need what you have, you are good enough, and you're not alone. I hope you pop in earbuds, somehow sneak away, and get ready to hear some hope from the trenches. You belong here, friend. We're so glad you're here. Hello, this is Danielle Bettman, and you are in for a treat. This is just going to be a single episode with just me because of mom life and uh, living in Antarctica and all of the things getting in the way of getting an interview edited. So this is going to be a breakdown of my most popular social media post on Instagram from 2020, and we are going to talk about it because it blew up. And it was fascinating to me. And it's on the topic of patience. So if extending your patience and having a short fuse is something that hits home to you, you're not going to want to miss this episode. Get your coffee and let's talk about it. So this is what the post said. When I'm spinning out because I can't control another person, it means I have work to do. It's a me problem. Okay, so... I talked about in this post how this was a lesson that I had to learn in Al-Anon, which is a family support group for families of alcoholics, and it really is breaking down how you are processing and affecting the disease, the family disease of alcoholism in relation to your loved one who is struggling. And you don't go to the support group to get them sober, you go to the support group to get your sanity back, and you realize just how little boundaries you have with being able to detach from the chaos and be able to to take care of yourself well and be able to make clear-minded decisions for what's best for the health and safety of everyone. And it is really what saved my sanity, saved my marriage, really, really taught me how to be a grown-up and do so much of this adulting that we're never taught to do. And I learned so much through this group especially when it comes to this topic of it's a me problem. If I'm panicking about what's happening with him, it's not his fault. It's not his problem. It's my problem. And that's really, really not the thing you want to hear when you feel like life is falling apart and you just want things to be okay and for him to be okay. I really, really, really had a hard time with this at the beginning because it's not comforting. But I had to come to this point of acceptance that I could not get him to stop drinking. I could not get him to stop drinking. I could not prevent him from driving drunk. I could not control when he was buying it, when he was consuming it, and how much. I couldn't control any part of it. And it wrecked me. Uh, Just that feeling of helplessness wrecked me. And I had to figure out how to kind of detach myself and figure out what I could control. And realize that I could still be okay even when he was not okay. And that's really where I found my power. And that's where I help families and parents find their power. Because it's in our composure. When we can actually separate ourselves from the chaos of a tantrum or meltdown. Or whatever is ensuing with our kids. And realize that it doesn't have to affect us to a place of losing our minds, that's when we find our power. Because parenting is so darn hard, you guys. I tell you this all the time. It's why my podcast is called Failing Motherhood. It's so hard. 
so hard. This is not an easy thing. We think that we're going to be these amazing, fun, loving, patient parents, and then we become parents and realize that that is not even a guarantee. It has nothing to do with our personality. It has everything to do with our boundaries and our ability to take care of our own selves, and it's just not easy. So patience and freaking out about our kids comes from a place of good intentions. It comes from the place that is worried about them and their well-being and how they are doing, and we want them and we care about about how they turn out. We want them to be good people. We want them to have success. We want them to have a better life than we had. We want to uh, create a really good human being. And because we are, we care a lot about that outcome, we are going to then become worried when the circumstances don't reflect that outcome. And we flip out the most when we feel helpless about the things that matter most. So it's because we care so much that we panic so much, which makes sense, right? But that then uh, shoots us in the foot because we're not able to find the right solutions. We're not able to respond in the right ways. We're not able to really have control over the things that are going to influence them most. And so we end up undermining our own influence in that moment. When we don't have control over our kids, and we don't have control over the outcome of a situation. And we don't ultimately have control over how they turn out at the end of this whole parenting journey. That freaks us out, man. Like that is scary stuff. So of course we're going to try to control anything that we feel like we can to leverage that outcome in the right direction. But we can't sit there panicking in fight or flight mode all of the moments when our kids actually just need us to be a calm, cool, collected flight attendant and they really need us to be the anchor to their storm, we can't bring our own thoughts, our own issues, our own problems to the table in that moment. We need to be able to set them aside, detach our own fears over our outcomes, and be able to be okay when they are not okay. So what can we do about it? Awareness, acceptance, and action. Awareness is the first step. It's becoming conscious that we are bringing extra baggage to the table, that we are bringing our influences from our own childhood and the ways we were parented, bringing in the perspective that we have fears about how our kids will turn out, and we're letting those fears drive our parenting. We're bringing those fears to the table when we interpret their behavior or whatever's going on with them at school and create meaning behind it. And that meaning is what freaks us out. We need to be aware and conscious that we are not perfect. Our kids aren't perfect. We're not going to be able to create and guarantee a perfect outcome and that that is scary. So accepting that fact is a really, really hard first step, but so important. That is uh, the prerequisite to being able to find any better ways of handling things. If we want to extend our patience, that's the first step. Acceptance, or awareness, and then acceptance, and then action. So when you have become aware that this is something that you're struggling with, and you are accepting the things that are outside of your control, when you begin to really sit and kind of surrender that fact of, I can only do what I can. I'm only one person. I only have this amount of years or time with them. There are so many things that are outside of my control that are, you know, the school my kids go to or the friends that they have or the pandemics that come up during their childhood, the medical experiences they have, the things that are within their DNA that make them who they are. When we accept all of those things that are outside of our control, then we can take action on the things that are. That's the huge defining factor is knowing what's on the side of things we can't control and the things that we can. And the things that we can control is powerful when we actually do them. And what are they? Being able to 
be in control of meeting our own needs. It's your job to meet your own needs, to take care of yourself, to get sleep, to eat food in three regular meals, to do what you know keeps you feeling like yourself. And of course, there are a lot more things outside of our control that are affecting our ability to just stay sane as well right now. But it's no one else's job but our own to keep tabs on how we are doing mentally and physically. It's our job to ask for help. It's our job to know when we've tapped out all of our own resources and ask, ask even if it's just for um, a meal, even if it's just for a uh, you know financial resource, even if it's for um, you know a random ask of strangers on the internet for advice, know when it's time and then go and do it. It's our job to learn the parenting tools that are effective to be able to get the outcome that we want. So we are leveraging and minimizing that regret. And it's our job to ultimately stay calm and to find ways that we really manage our composure. It's no one else's job but our own. And it doesn't mean it's easy, but it's no one else's job. It's our job. And but when that can feel like a lot of pressure, but at the same time it can feel very empowering. Because if you know that that is actually those are the areas where you are actually have the potential to see huge results when you spend your time and your energy in those areas rather than the other areas that are all completely outside of your control and it's just genuinely wasting time and energy, that's when you find your power. That's when you can really, really find things that maximize your patience and see behavior change and completely uh, alter the culture of your home. That's where you really find those results and where it matters. So realizing through that step three-step process of awareness, acceptance, and action that you can be okay when your child is not okay. And if you focus on yourself and how you're doing and your sanity and your needs, everyone else gets better. Every other relationship in your life and situation and scenario with your kids gets better when you focus on yourself first. When you ask yourself, what do I need? If I need my game face, if I need the best parenting tools, if I need to extend my patience, if I need to show up in a different way, what do I need to be able to do that? And when, sometimes when things are going on with our kids, we constantly ask, what do they need? What do they need? What do they need? And that's important to decode what's going on with them. But it's even more important to first ask so that I can find out what they need. What do I need? How can I set myself up for success? How can I put my game face on? And when we fail, because we do, those negative moments are feedback. They are feedback. They're simply letting us know that there's a disconnect or there's a problem. And we can use that feedback to make better decisions going forward. So if you are so, so, so exhausted, instead of just continuing to beat yourself up for that and, you know, saying, why, why am I so tired? Ask yourself, why does my body need so much rest right now? And then focus on, focus your energy on the solutions that you find or the problem, finding solutions for the problems you find there. If you are continually freaking out and spinning out when there's a particular behavior your child does, ask yourself, why does this behavior bother me so much? What am I thinking in this moment? What am I feeling in this moment? Why is it such a problem? And f figure out what you need. So if you are really, really losing your patience lately, it's a, it's a symptom. It's a red flag that's asking you to turn inward and say, what do I need right now? And sometimes it's just sleep. So many times <laughs> for me, it's just sleep, more sleep. I need so much sleep right now. I don't even have, it's not even rational, but it just is what it is. I know it's sleep. Um, it might be community. It might be support. It might be 
a better parenting tools than you have right now because you just don't have any anything that works right now. But you need to have that heart to heart with yourself because you're the only one that can do that and make that decision and know really well what's going on. And you're not alone. You are absolutely not alone. You might just need something or someone to come alongside you right now. And that is, there is no shame in that. If you are a parent that is asking all of these questions and seeking out resources and support and care about how you're doing and how your kids are doing, you are absolutely doing a fantastic job. You're worried about the right things and that's the sign of a really, really good parent. So no shame in this game. Absolutely not. Um, This is really, really hard and important work and you are not alone. Um, You might just need something to fill in the gap because we pandemic burnout is real. Pandemic burnout is so real right now. Um, and it, there were so many families I connected with from the Chaos to Calm Masterclass that are all feeling the same way. And so I hope you know that you are doing a really, really good job just by listening to this podcast and by uh, applying and having this heart to heart with yourself. So if at the end of that conversation, you really feel like you do need some support you need some better parenting tools. You need to feel like you know what you're doing even a little bit more uh, because you find yourself in these loops of the threats and the bribes and the yelling that um, just feels so icky, but you don't have any other strategies that are working for your child, especially if they're particularly very hard to parent. You're so not alone. And that's I, that's why I do what I do, friend. <laughs> you you are my people, and I don't want you to hesitate any longer before seeing what resources and support and solutions are out there. So schedule a sanity and solutions call. It's no obligation. 30 minutes free. I will point you in the right direction of other resources. If I don't feel like for any reason, we wouldn't be a good fit to work together. But I absolutely will do everything I can to connect you with help uh, because no family should suffer. And in this miserable, yucky culture, um, beating themselves up every single night for the lack of patience that you have when there are solutions out there and you're going to feel so, you can feel so, so, so much better about how you're doing. So reach out. Links in, links in the show notes or in my Instagram bio. Schedule a call. See what's possible for your family and give yourself a break. <laughs> the beating yourself up thing isn't helping anyone. It's, it's possible to have more patience when you meet your needs so practically and know that you're not alone. So thank you so much for listening. And I hope, I hope, hope to hear from you soon. Thanks for going on this journey with me. I believe in you and I'm cheering you on. 